And so I'd like to just go through some of these terms and hopefully help all those who are watching this video get a better grasp on how to communicate with somebody who's Calvinist. So for somebody who's best, I think, of our group for defining Calvinist terms in the best way for their ministry, which is Leighton, uh, I'd love to get you started off. If you could let us know what a Calvinist means by monergism and why that's not actually a good representation of the gospel. Yeah, I like to quote Dr. Allen uh, when I talk about how Calvinists have the same vocabulary in a different dictionary. Um, and so defining of terms is important. And in their dictionary, sometimes they have words they have created for themselves. Uh, and that includes the concepts of monergism and synergism. Now, some of us uh, in the non-Calvinist world have just adopted those terms and we use them and we know what Calvinists typically mean by those terms. But I, I push back on even using that terminology because I think it's based upon a conflation in the mind of the Calvinist that, that is arguing that God is 100% responsible for our salvation as if we would disagree with that. Of course, we believe that God is 100% responsible for our salvation. Um, but when you conflate man's choice to repent and believe with God's choice to save whosoever repents and believes, and you make them into one choice— that's called conflation, you make them into one thing, and you call it all salvation, then you have this quandary that's created by the Calvinist. And so the illustration I've used is like a pie. You've seen those pie charts before. Well, Calvinists have made salvation one big pie chart. And so what oftentimes they'll do is they'll say, look, look those Arminians over there, those uh, Southern Baptist traditionalists over there, those provisionists over there, they're trying to divide up that pie. And they're trying to give you know, God, 99% of the, the credit of that pie, but they're covering that little sliver. And they're saying that 1% belongs to man, but not us, not us Calvinists. We're saying 100% of the pie, 100% of it is salvation is God. And it sounds very pious. It sounds like, yeah, that's, that's what I believe. But the problem is it's a conflation of two separate choices. You are 100% responsible for your choices. God is 100% responsible for saving um, and, and you don't conflate those two. And the illustration I often use is the one that the scripture gives us with regard to the prodigal son. Um, who is responsible, 100% responsible for restoring the son uh, to sonship and giving him the golden uh, ring and the fatted calf and, and the party? <clears throat> the father is 100% responsible for that. Who was responsible for his sin and for humbling himself and coming home from his pigsty? The man, the young boy was. And so those are two separate choices. Now, yes, we believe that God initiates salvation. Yes, we believe God's the one who calls, but we're responsible for what we do with his calling. And we're responsible to repent and believe. That is 100% your responsibility. Um, but God is 100% responsible for providing the means of salvation. No one would be saved apart from the atoning work of Christ. No one would be saved if God didn't choose to save those who are uh, who humble themselves and repent and come home out of their pigsty. God is 100% responsible for that. So what synergism and monergism, that terminology created by the Calvinist has done, is conflated those two terms, and they've tried to paint it like monergism is the higher, more pious perspective, because on monergism, it's mono meaning one, it's only God's choice, not synergism, which is two people working together, which by the way, synergism is actually mentioned in the Bible several different times <laughs> in different contexts, not sociologically, but the word monergism doesn't exist in the Bible. That's that's irrelevant. But the point is, is that I don't think it's, um, it's all that, uh, you know, humanistic and man-centered to involve humanity in the salvation of humanity. I mean, our, our involvement in, in salvation is implicit and explicit throughout the scriptures. And so uh, to, to create those kinds of terminology, that kind of terminology in order to kind of ostracize the, the non-Calvinist to make it sound like we're being man-centered or that we're not giving God 100% credit for salvation, I think is erroneous and should be called out. So again, so if somebody confronts you with accusing you of being synergistic and they're being monergistic, just remember the story of the prodigal son and go back to that and then ask who is the one responsible for restoring them. And that's a great way if someone confronts you to be able to have confidence that your view isn't adding your works to the gospel because it's not. Uh, coming to Jesus in right. faith is not adding your works. And so we need to, we need to remember that. And I, I love, I love just the use of that story, the prodigal son, because hopefully that's an image we can all remember.